What's going on you guys? Welcome to another episode of JNB Tuning. In today's video, we are working on our Asuna Sunfire. As I have mentioned in the past uh, episode, the Asuna Sunfire is suffering from a coolant leak. And guys, uh, it's pretty much just gashing coolant all over the place. So there's two or three places where this leak is happening right now. So we'll be tackling this today. Um, and uh, this car is super old now, guys. I know I haven't really driven the car so much. There's only about 100,000 kilometers in it. And um, because of its age, a lot of the pipes and the tubing and um, all the seals are starting to break and um, needs to be refreshed now for sure. So we'll be working on that today. As you guys have seen in the previous episode, I, was, uh, I did fix the, the fuel. Uh, regulator uh, hose feed line that is leaking so bad and that's now rectified and uh, the spottiness and the misfire that we're having on the car has been uh, fixed so I'm so glad that that's at least fixed now and rectified so anyways guys without further ado we're gonna be working on our coolant system stay tuned here's the radiator uh, drain plug and uh, our um, engine block <clears throat> drain is just right it's kind of tough to show you guys where it is but it's basically that little that plug over there that's basically where the um, the drain for the engine block there for the coolant just right beside our uh, uh, return pipe that was leaking there that we're gonna need to repair so underneath the downpipe, as you guys can see. all the drips using our pan here uh, I got a nice clean pan here um, to basically trap all that uh, fluid coolant that will come out of there and uh, so that we don't mess up the floor five minutes later well to get to the plug I gotta remove this brace here that holds the downpipe uh, or the manifold and uh, just to clear my path here because I can't really get to the bolt itself so there you go now it's a lot clearer path I should be able to uh, have a leverage to actually crack that open okay wish me luck What a mess. Luckily, I captured everything, guys. Nice, finally. Well, it's a bit of a mess, guys, but we got it done. It was a bit, uh, you know, it's stubborn to get that bolt out, but because it was starting to strip. Um, 
but I managed to get it from the top instead of uh, here from the bottom. I don't have much leverage uh, uh, doing it from here. So basically, uh, yeah, we should be able to remove that uh, pipe return, uh, coolant return there, cross uh, pipe, and uh, work with the gaskets and the uh, uh, o-ring to seal it up nicely because it is leaking right there. So the next step here guys is to um, unbolt this joint, this pipe that goes down to the uh, thermostat or the pump, the water pump all the way down there. As you guys see it was leaking all the way down there. Um, unbolt this two bolts and then um, basically pull it out from there because it's a grommets uh, or a o-ring, rubber o-ring that uh, has been a prone issue at the bottom there that uh, do leak. That's what I pretty much heard from the group, the Isuzu group in, in the Facebook, uh, Isuzu Zone group. Uh, thank you so much for those guys. Uh, they've been a pretty big help for uh, getting me to troubleshoot this thing. So anyways, guys, that's the next step right there. Get this pipe out. Here's our return pipe or cross pipe. Uh, it looks like it's an actual thicker o-ring gasket that's used on the lower end and then the actual joint itself is actually a another o-ring type seal. I was thinking that it's going to be a um, diamond shape um, gaskets but it looks like it's just an, another o-ring in there to seal it up. There weren't really any leaks coming from this side uh, the actual leak is coming from the, uh, what do you call this thing? It's the feed line for our uh, heater core. And uh, so that's going to be at the, uh, the thermostat level. So I have to undo the full thermostat. I'm going to show you guys exactly what uh, we're going to be working on here. So get up here a little bit. So I might have to take everything out. Um, clear our um, distributor cap here, the wirings and all, and then undo the hoses and then get to the thermostat and on thermostat housing as well. And this, the secondary leak is coming from the bottom there. There's a pipe that feeds from the thermostat all the way to the back, which is that line over there that feeds the uh, uh, heater core. So. That's where that leak is coming from, is that line there, basically. Goes underneath, it's that thin underneath the thermostat. So that's pretty much the, the amount of work that I have to do here, guys. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, for sure. And hopefully we can rectify all this coolant uh, leakage. Because you know, the car is pretty much, uh, it's pretty old now and a lot of things, and you know, I barely driven the car, but of course it's been stored for so long that, uh, Obviously things are starting to, to leak, pipe seals and uh, rubber are starting to crack. Um, I just fixed the feed line for the injector there and as well as the breather tube here is also, there's a crack there. So there's a few tubes that needs to be replaced now. So that's kind of the idea here is to freshen up all the tube, tubing and the hosing. Um, and hopefully we can restore this beauty. Well guys, while we're at it, I just flushed the uh, radiator here, as you guys can see, just to clean it up with hot water. I didn't run the hose, but um, I figured I'll just dump a load of water right on the, uh, the port here, the fill port. And uh, yeah, you see how it cleaned the radiator pretty good. Let's see what, uh, what sort of particles we got there. Show you guys what I got uh, from the uh, flush there for the radiator. There are some bunch of particles that came out out of the radiator 
um, as you guys can see, I see the better view there for you guys. It's uh, there's definitely some some particles that came out, um, but not much. It's not so bad, I guess, in that sense. I'm gonna try and uh, also flush the the engine block in that sense. These are all the fluid that came out after I flush it with hot water, dump the hot water in there from the top and it just, you know, pulled all that gunk. Minus those uh, paint chips there. Actually, those are, it probably came off from the uh, bottom there when I was trying to use my uh, extension bar and it was scraping the paint out of the, the metal and those were uh, basically washed out when the, the water was gushing down but anyways guys um yeah so not so bad um this is the amount of uh fluid we got uh there's uh about uh i would say two five liters uh over five liters of uh of coolant and um 50 50 of course in that sense water and coolant um anyways we'll continue on Here's where we at guys, pretty much I took out the air intake uh, to give us some space here. Basically what we need to do is we need to get this pipe out to be able to get to the bolt in the back there. It's the brace basically that's holding the, uh, the feed line. So I'm going to free that up, get some space to be able to get to the, uh, the hose on the feed line and be able to take it out and see if I can pull it out because basically it's just a grommet or in an o-ring on the other end into the into the thermostat so anyways guys that's pretty much where we're at at this point well a little issue we run into guys as you guys can see uh, this stupid bolt has snapped you know makes it makes the work a little bit more interesting now we got to get rid of that remaining um portion of the bolt now basically guys so if you guys can see i don't know if you can see it but pretty much have to get that bolt out now right there anyways we gotta get uh we gotta drill it out and um Try to get it out there, I guess. It got severed in the process. I'm gonna show you guys what I did here quickly. Um, basically, I've taken this uh, hose out and also the bottom hose. This is the feed line and then this is the return line, I believe, or feed line and then return line. Um, so basically now, if you guys can see it, um, I gotta get through that bolt there to be able to undo this guy here now it's free it's nice and free so we can now be able to pull this out because that's that's basically what's leaking underneath there so we got the bolt took a while to actually get this bolt out a little bit because it's a little stubborn but uh it's all loose now so we can go from there go so guys we got our pipe so pretty much uh this is the culprit here one of the culprit 
basically has been leaking right there. Um, so as you can see, another O-ring right there that we need to replace. Hopefully all that uh, parts that I purchased from Rock Euro, Rock Auto, um, you know, hopefully we got all the proper uh, O-ring that we need for this job. Basically here, guys, this is the piping that we'll be working with. Uh, this is our return uh, coolant line. And here's the uh, the inlet feed for the uh, a heater core. So all this basically needs to be replaced so that way it stops leaking. So anyways, we're gonna clean this up, prep it up, and then finally return everything the way it was. Well guys, quick update here. Uh, we got our thermostat housing taken out. You know, we actually have to get the whole thing out because uh, it's a little tough to work on um, getting that bolt that uh, broke there without taking it out. So, um, and at the same time, it'd be kind of tricky to clean all this uh, inlet and outlet uh, piping that are kind of corroded. I would like to actually clean this up pretty nicely before putting it back in. So it will never leak uh, again. But anyways, guys, that's how far we got here. We're halfway there. Well, guys, we managed to uh, clean up the uh, thermostat housing here. As you guys can see, it's nice and clean now. Um, let me see if I have a gasket that I could use with this one. Might as well replace it in the process. It's now in, nice and clean before we put it back all together. Uh, we got lucky here, guys. Uh, I was able to actually pull and twist the remaining of the bolt. It wasn't super tight in there, so I, was, I managed to actually just pinch it and uh, undo it so we didn't have to drill it at all. Well, here's our metric uh, O-rings and here's our gasket that we'll be using to uh, reseal our thermostat. So uh, anyways, guys, we'll uh, clean it up and remove the old O-ring and replace it with this brand new ones here and uh, we'll uh, repackage it. All right, guys, we basically cleaned everything up, scrubbed it nicely before we put the brand new O-ring in. Now it's nice and clean, as you guys can see. I already installed the, um, the feed line pipe there with the brand new O-ring. Um, so yeah, we're pretty much ready to go. I'm kind of debating if I should replace this gasket. It looks pretty, it's in good condition here and it's a rubber kind of gasket and it wasn't leaking to begin with. Um, you know, I pulled it nicely and, and slowly. So I don't know, maybe I should just reuse this one because um, it looks pretty solid and it's, a, it's a, one of those rubber ones versus this one here. I'm not sure if I should replace it uh, or not. And I, I guess I just don't wanna put it back in and all of a sudden it leaks in the long run. I might as well replace it. So we'll see how it goes. Right, we're set to go guys, uh, basically. Here's a new gasket. I have cleaned it up nicely, removed the old gasket. Um, we'll be installing it in pretty soon here, guys. The gasket is pretty much, uh, you know, on now. Uh, given it's a, it's a dry gasket, I uh, put some uh, adhesive to kind of um, secure it on the thermostat housing a little bit there so it doesn't fall off when I'm trying to put it in. Um, I'm just trying to dry it now and just, you know, using the weight of the thermostat there to actually um, bond it um, onto the housing. And at the same time, I'm going to be putting some RTB in there as well silicone sealant uh, on the um, one side of the uh, the gasket before we install it in there to make sure that it's uh, all secured in the process. And one thing I want to mention, I put some dialectic grease on all the, um, the fitting, um, all our gaskets in there to make sure that they slide in nicely in the process. And likewise on our return line or our feed line here uh, for the, um, heater core, um, the sealant also, I put in some dielectric grease before I inserted it in to slide in nicely. Well guys, 
our TV is on now, so we're gonna install it here pretty soon. Guys, we're now in the final leg. As you guys can see, everything is back on track. Everything is installed back in there now. Um, just gotta get the return pipe um, installed and bolted right in here. And then we'll return this uh, hose over here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, everything's back. Cross pipe is back, already installed all the way down there. Uh, our hose are back. We just gotta make sure everything is tightened from here on and uh, torque everything up uh, to the spec. And we should be able to put our coolant back in place and uh, we should be good to go from there. Stay tuned. Well, here we are from the bottom guys. As you guys can see, it's installed now. All fastened and everything. We have to uh, make sure our drain bolt is uh, nicely secure there. And uh, put our brace to hold our downpipe. And we should be all good from here. The following day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're now into the following day. And pretty much the Asuna Sunfire is ready to go. Um, before I actually refill the cooling system, I decided to do further flashing of the engine block and the radiator. You've seen me earlier yesterday doing the radiator only, but this time I, since everything's back, all the tubings and the piping are back on track, I did flush it again a couple times and now it's fairly... I'll show you guys exactly what's going on here. Um, it's now clear, no more color in the uh, fluid that's coming out. I'll probably do one more flush and uh, see if that cleans anything else from there. Here's our coolant. It's a ethylene glycol based um, antifreeze. It's a GM based product basically. And uh, we have uh, two gallons and another four liters of, um, about a four liters of distilled water. It uh, is not recommended or it's, it's not needed to have a distilled water, but I'm gonna use distilled water anyways. So anyways, guys, we are going to refill our coolant here and uh, we'll do uh, the slow process of getting all our air packets out, out of the, uh, the engine here so we don't get any airlocks. It should be pretty simple in this case. Uh, basically have the heater all the way up to the highest point and uh, fill it up until the radiator is full and start the car until it uh, it's in the operating temperature until the thermostat opens and uh, basically cy cycle all the, uh, the fluid in. And again, as the water uh, settles, we'll add more. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. You guys can see it's basically purging there all the air is uh, coming out out of the system I had this filled up earlier and uh, now it look it's getting in there so the operating temperature is coming up now I don't see any leak going on at all in the system so far anyways there's a bit of a um, smoke coming out from there I'm not sure exactly why uh, it could be because uh, it's just heating up everything underneath there that was wet. So, but temperature wise, 
It's looking pretty good here so far. I have the heater all the way up to the highest point. Um, let's see if we're getting heat so far. Yeah, we're not getting heat so far, so it hasn't cycled quite yet. We're getting cold air still and have it up all the way to the highest point heat wise. Uh, hopefully we can get some heat here soon. 15 minutes later. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our video for the day. Um, and basically here, guys, we're done with the Asuna Sunfire. I went underneath, checked everything, nothing's leaking. After a half an hour uh, or so of, uh, you know, warming the car up and uh, purging everything, um, purging the system, and now everything works just fine. I'll check again tomorrow. I'll check the level of the uh, coolant again one more time, and we should be good from there. And uh, no leaks at all, guys, so far um, after the, uh, the testing that I've done. Well, anyways, guys, if you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button. And at the same time, if you like this video, please, please, please press the like button. And at the same time, uh, guys, ring that bell so that way you can get notified for all the videos that I have uh, published going forward. Peace out.